Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Greg Silverman here, Chief Investment Officer and CFO to the stars. Just kidding. Uh, another session of Come Learn With Me. Come learn some uh, research, investment research type articles. We curate a lot of articles. This one did well last week and we read it together. So come check it out. It's quite uh, topical. Germany's gas crisis is in charts, pipeline repair and then what? Oh, okay, that should be interesting. Glad you guys picked up on this. The flow of gas from Russia to Germany through the whoops, Nord Stream 1 pipeline will stop on Monday for a planned 10 day maintenance period. Question is, will flows then resume? Let's just be clear. These are sometimes, okay, July 8, so about a month ago. So we know that they did turn on partially the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. Germany is largely dependent on Russian gas to fuel its export led economy and to keep homes warm. But Europe's latest economy, but Europe's largest economy has been bracing for a possible complete halt in Russian supplies. If Moscow steps up its use of gas as an economic weapon the West against the West while it's wages war in Ukraine. Temporary stop. The flow of gas from Russia to Germany through the North from Pipeline is scheduled to stop on Monday for maintenance. The question is when will it resume? Okay. Flow slows to 40% of capacity in the 12th of June. Already down from last year, Russia's gas flows slowed even further during the Nord Stream 1 pipeline last month in Berlin moved to the second of three stages of emergency plans. Industry executives and economists are scrambling to figure out how Germany will fare in the coming months and beyond, and where it is especially vulnerable. Germany is known for its cars and its machine tools, tools full factories throughout China, but sectors likely to be hardest hit are also its glass and chemical industries. Charts that illustrate Germany's exposure. One, the Nord Stream 1 pipeline from Russia through the Baltic Sea is the most important direct gas route into Germany. Before the start of maintenance, flows are already down 40% of capacity, with Russia citing trouble with turbines and sanctions. Okay, well, we saw that. There is concern after the maintenance period, the pipeline closed for good. And that event storage caverns would not be filled in time for winter heating season, which is just three months away. Slower flow. Daily flow of gas from Russia to Germany through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline already declined sharp in mid June. Okay, closing kilowatt days, kilowatt hours per day. It's not just Germany, gas flows to Europe are also curtailed by routes linking Russia with Slovakia and Czech Republic and Austria via Ukraine, and another route through Belarus and Poland. Russian gas exports to Europe. What we got here? Lubim, Lubmin. Yes, these are different pipelines into different countries. One looks like it's stopped altogether. Malno. Look at those. Less gas and caps on price for consumer put the squeeze on energy suppliers like German utility Uniper, which is in talks with the government about a possible bailout. Oh, bailout. Uniper's plant is so far the most vivid example of the war's effect on corporate Germany. Corporate Germany. Uniper plunge, which is Uniper Germany. Okay, well, let's see, they're at 41 bucks. Wow. Down to 10, down 30, 75%. German industry, which includes titans like Volkswagen and Siemens, is the biggest consumer of gas, but half of all the households which heat with gas aren't far behind. Emergency plans say homes should be prioritized if the state is forced to ration. It gets really cold in Germany, I know that. Uh, along, I've been to Berlin in winter. Eesh, cold. Alongside hospitals and essential services, there are also calls to make households part of savings programs. In Germany, industry and households are the biggest consumers of gas. Accounting for around two thirds of total sales in commerce. Power, power generation. Germans shouldn't have given up their nuclear power. Now they're seeing that, right? Take a look at our uh, uranium group if you're interested in nuclear power. Within the industries consuming gas for process, Germany's, Germany's chemical sector is the biggest single consumer, according to Moody's Bessoff. Alone uses 4% of Germany's gas at its Ludwigshafen site. In a scenario of reduced gas availability, European chemical producers could face at least two winters with gas supplies, Moody said in research note, and it costs would go, would go up as well. Second in Germany, the highest gas consumption of chemical, food and tobacco, metal, paper, glass, and ceramics. So I guess they feed onto one another, is what it says. 
In the grimmest scenario, a complete halt to Russian natural gas exports could cost Germany 12.7% of economic performance in the second half of 2022, according to the Bavarian VBW Industry Association. That would translate into 193 billion euros in total economic loss. Germany may be famous for its cars, but the industries that stand to see their activities most curtailed by lack of gas include glare, glass, iron and steel, ceramics, food and printing, vast knock on effects to other sectors. What this is saying, down 40 this GM. Expected decline in production in, by, by industry in percent. And finally, was that it? That's it. Our standards. Reuters is still one of the publications I like. Well, they don't charge you for the news like Bloomberg does. Anyway, okay, so that's it, guys. So that was interesting, huh? What uh, Germany will face if uh, gas or supplies are cut off. So I have no <laughs> no insight into this. Uh, we will follow the markets. It looks like we're in a, a period of hiatus from high inflation. So let's see if we're in the car before the storm, eye of the storm, or if the storm is coming back, or if we're through the storm. Anyway, guys, I'm just rambling now. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, there's always something to learn on these come, with, learn, come learn with me sessions. I always enjoy doing them myself as I pick up additional knowledge and bring it to the front of my mind, which I like to think about and bring into everyday use. And hey, that makes me sound smarter, smarter. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Take a look at some of the links down below. Subscribe and like. Greg Silverman, out for now.